it's a can do attitude that we're building we're, we're building an attitude so this is an attitude above all it's swar se bane desh we all have our own stories you know and story is a beautiful way of communicating So today we have with us is Zarina Srivala who is the co-founder of the Swadesh Foundation and works full time as its managing trustee and director. The Swadesh Foundation operates with a single minded focus of empowering rural India through holistic and sustainable growth using its unique 360 degree model. The foundation has 270 plus full time staff serving 2000 plus hamlets impacting over half a million people. Ms Zarina was also the co-founder of the media company UTV. where among other ventures she created and launched several tv channels including hangama bindas and utv movies and also she is the member of the un women business secretary advisory council where she also has her own interests in philosophy and is a member of new acropolis thank you so much for joining us varina it's a pleasure to have you thank you thank you so much deepak it's lovely to be here so okay. varina to begin with the conversation so what led to the inception of the swadesh foundation and how has it grown there on to create something of what you call a 360 degree model of development yes so we uh, actually began long time ago as a very small ngo called share we worked in a very few villages in the year 2000 and but the learnings from that has really propelled us forward helped us forward uh in 2012 when we divested uh, our company utv we we basically decided to continue the work but really to scale it up to ramp it up and we had an ambition to reach a million people and to lift them out of poverty which is kind of a crazy thing for two media people to try to do uh yeah. so what we did is we went on a study tour ronnie and myself we went on a one year study tour we met people we traveled the country we finally at the end of it landed up in bangladesh and met sir faisal of brac and we were very deeply inspired by his model we didn't exactly copy it because he wasn't doing exactly but there was a lot of inspiration that we took from him and many of the other wonderful people we met on the way and from that we designed three things the first is the one that got the most criticism in the beginning but is today our you know i think our, our i don't know what to, what the right word is but it is what we're known for uh, which is our 360 degree model of development a holistic model of development an integrated model of development so we today we have water toilets education health and livelihoods okay and in the beginning everybody told us don't be silly after meeting us we told you not to do that we told you to focus on one thing you know that was the advice we were given from very well meaning people and it's not bad advice at all and in fact we have struggled so much deepak i cannot tell you how difficult the journey has been for all of us the team on the ground everyone because imagine trying to do everything in a village yes but you know what drove us deepak is if it was my grandmother living in the village or my mother or my father what would i not do for them would i not do toilets would i not do water would i not do health would i not do education would i not do livelihoods these are the basic essentials there's still a lot we don't do because we really can't but these we felt were our minimum requirement okay and because the goal is to lift people out of poverty so that's one key thing about so this the other one is that we have an exit strategy which means we have an empowerment strategy and before that what we do is we engage deeply with the community so it's called the 4e model so we engage with the community we empower the community through village institutions and many other very exciting ways and we really make them in charge of their own life and then we execute multiple programs along with the community and multiple partners and then we hope to exit deepak we've still we've been working so hard on this exit strategy it is hard it is tough we have not done it yet but i think the new way we work and i will discuss that when you ask me one another question it will come up i think it will be possible in another 2 years to exit a couple of maybe 20 30 model villages dream villages great and that's really great to hear that the whole basis of the foundation itself lies in the thought process where you see it as your own 
rather than you know helping someone else it's it's you know the key is that the yeah. it's a can do attitude that we're building we're, we're building an attitude so this is an attitude above all it's swa se bane des i can i can do it myself that's what we want we don't want to do charity work we want to empower people we want to make them proud we want to make them happy you know so it's it's really and it's a passionate project but it requires really your head your heart your money your hands your time everything Definitely. and i think that's where the exit strategy also comes into play where a lot Very of guys in these days have started planning an exit strategy in development space where they want to make it sustainable rather than you know making them dependent on their initiatives for exactly, a long time exactly exactly and that brings me to the next question where i would now want to touch upon the themes that you are kind of uh, you mentioned a bit about but if you can extensively share which themes are you specifically focusing on and so, how you intend to you know expand it further sure so as i touched upon in the 360 we've dis- discussed what what we do and i don't want to get into the details of that because they're very technical top topics what i want to speak about here is our greatest shift of focus as you asked was really on this push versus pull strategy i think you know you're from the corporate and in the beginning you want goals and you want targets and you want to have uh, you know 10000 people taking up go tree and you want have all these it doesn't work it's a slow patient game it it's slow it's patience okay and it is a pull strategy you need to empower the community slowly if you want to go fast first deepak you have to go slow okay you have to empower engage build trust train experiment see what what does the community really need okay this is a slow process initially start slow go step by step there's no hurry there's no hurry you know and this is not something that corporate india understands us yeah. you were like the height of corp we were so corporate in our approach right um and what we dis- decided to do 2 years ago deepak is really we changed the whole approach and it was a huge 180 degree shift where we said we had been working for so many years right we said unless the village forms what we call a village development committee and they give themselves their own name we will not work in your village and this is after like years of working in a village and the community was like what do you mean you've always been working they said no now you form this committee then the committee has to prove that they are ready to take up the work ready to get, go door to door and build the demand themselves not us anymore collect the money do there's a there's a contribution for everything we do a village has to contribute okay. so we have built 1000 of them we have 10000 community volunteers who are trained and you know of, of course deepak everybody's not at the same level but the kind of stories and and you have asked me and i will answer some of the most inspiring moments have been with our vdcs and this this spirit of giving in the community this seva ka bhavna that we try to build in the community that is the first shift of focus the community must take charge of their lives the community must not must really believe this is my project i want it i will work for it i will do whatever their heart needs to be in it yes the other thing is we're constantly experimenting you know we're constantly changing and tweaking and accepting our many hundred failures <laughs> just like so many failures and it's really something i think we should put in a book and write them so other people don't repeat them but this is a big one the push versus pull geographically yes of course we've expanded we started with one block we're now in eight blocks seven in raigad one in nasik we're just entering nasik now and every time we enter a new block we tweak our model slightly so that we can see how is the model proceeding how the whole idea of the swades foundation is to build a model of development and every block we enter block by block say 50000 people approximately at a time to 1 lakh people at a time and now of course as you said we're at half a million mark little bit more in fact and every block has its own learnings it's a fascinating journey and you really touched upon like these three aspects that i would i would say that came across through the answer that you just mentioned uh, which were first of all 
passion for the whole project that you work in in the development space which is crucial for anything which yes. definitely comes through like whatever you say whatever you share you know in whatever you're sharing about the societies or the communities that you're working with second being the experimentation bit of it which i'm really sure like you mentioned the failures need to be collated so that yes. no one repeats those things it's a waste of effort and we've got not that much of time to change <laughs> so we better like shorten the time and share whatever we've learned share 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 your failures share your successes you won't believe uh, deepak we took five we took 3 years to develop a poetry program because we couldn't find we went to other people i won't mention names and it was just a disaster their model it didn't work for us at least in our geography but now we have something that sort of works yes it took 3 years to develop just a poetry which is very important actually so, yeah. so that is the thing that even people need to share in the space like development space is the most you know share worthy a space where everyone has multiple initiatives running on the same themes but mm-hmm. is just the sharing is not happening and coming to the third aspect of it which you mentioned in the beginning of it was patience and that brings me to the next question which is that having been the founder of you know UTV one of india's foremost media and entertainment conglomerates where you led and created these channels and brands for the company so how is it that a media i would say tycoon for that matter <laughs> you know goes into the development space and does this experience come in handy or were you able to you know uh, forge a newer methodology to work around the space so it's a really lovely question deepak thank you for asking it there are lots of amazing similarities initially we thought oh my god to media people what on earth are we doing you know we didn't we just see one of the good things about rani and me is we know we don't know <laughs> you know we knew we knew nothing we know nothing however there are some very interesting similarities Okay, of course the work is totally different, but the the similarities. So I'll tell you what they are. Okay, so the first thing is that you must know, respect, and if possible, even love the community you serve. Whether it's a viewer or it's a customer or it's a community, you must know them. You must know their heart. You must know their mind. You must know their aspirations, their hopes, their dreams. Otherwise, you will fail. You will fail. and that is something that i think rani and i do really well is that when we meet people and we interact we can we can learn this we can grasp this because we are interested in it we want to help yeah and it's not just through you know you can help like this through a corporate also and i believe that the work we have done in utv and the work rani is doing now in upgrad does help human beings they make build aspiration they build dreams they empower people so that any company and every company can do so that's the first the second is the power of collaboration just imagine and and this nobody does better than the movie business the the yeah. media business right because it, it's like so we have so many ngos that do everything themselves right and it's fine but we don't we collaborate like crazy okay. so it's just like the equivalent of a movie that i have decided to direct produce act do the cinematography <laughs> you can't do it you can't do it you need partners so the power of collaboration is something that we brought to the table with multiple partnerships like ngos other ngos multiple ngos work with us okay the other is work with heroes create your own heroes and those heroes are of course of swades are different they're the community who's the hero and tell their stories widely you know the power of a good story is something that we bring to the table to that these three things to and i think uh, the most important point you touched upon was the aspect of stories because that is what motivates a lot of people to kind of yes. aspire and then probably you know take action for something to do to be done in the space we all and, have our own stories you know and story is a beautiful way of definitely of communicating yeah and uh, like you mentioned that uh, mr rani and you yourself have been interested in these personal stories of people that's what inspires you you learn from that so could you just share a few instances where these stories probably you know pushed you further or motivated you to do the work Absolutely. that you're doing i i'd love to do that okay so i'm going to focus not on individuals but on my favorite topic which is our village development committee okay so covid struck for two weeks the the lockdown happened on the 24th of march right and uh, we racked our brains how are we going to communicate then nisarga also happened it was a very difficult period for our geography 
we decided to get it, keep trying to get in touch with our VDC. So we tried and we tried and a lot of people didn't have more money to replenish their mobiles. There were a lot of problems, a lot of problems. But slowly we worked through our VDCs and we managed to distribute food to the neediest people because there were a lot of tribals who lost their jobs. Their daily wages were gone in one move. It was everybody was at home and they didn't have money to to eat. So about 17,000 households were distributed food by our really brave Swadesh volunteers and the VDC. So our volunteers, I mean, I, I, it's really something else. 17,000 households got monthly essentials, all the rations needed over a period of time. We went, the community came out, helped with the distribution, stood in line, the VDC supervised. Our boys went and did this work. That's one. I mean, otherwise, I don't know what would have happened. Then there is these ladies, okay? There's this village called Kasarwadi in Sudagar, okay? There's these ladies. It's a woman-led VDC, meaning, see, in a VDC, there are 10 people. They have to be five ladies and five men. But the women of Kasarwadi have taken charge fully. Um, so, and, and every idea that came is theirs. Nothing is ours, huh? nothing, nothing. They make their own village plan, everything. So, so they said, we have this test. It's, it's called the convening part test which we will only enter your village if you form it, you have a bank account, some other details, and you have a convening part test. So they thought, why don't we do something really important and very innovative? So they came up with this idea with the Anganwadi Sevika, who's also a part of the VDC, that each house will prepare a meal, and then we will have a nutrition awareness session and an award for the best meal that is prepared with the most nutrition. So that was just a small thing. Then after six months, they we decided that they were just wonderful. So we decided to roll out our eye care program. We have a mobile van. They not only invited their own village through handwritten beautiful cards they made, which I wish I had with me to show you. They sent us also a card, handwritten with drawings and everything. Not only that, all their own households, but 12 nearby hamlets were invited for this, who refused to form VDCs. See, Sudagar is our newest, one of our new blocks. Okay. And we are still in the process of forming these VDCs. So they invited 12 hamlets. And they, the way they invited them, they spoke to them. You won't believe it. All those hamlets formed VDCs after that. You know, because they said, saw the power of the community. So, and then they've done economic development. They've done plans for the poorest of the poor in their village. And then they've had celebrations galore. They have celebrations galore where they invite the government people to, to see their work, you know, so they're very inspiring. Another one, which is a uh, tribal community, another wonderful story, just very quickly I'll tell you, yeah. is Bhavshet Vadi. Initially, they were very shy. Deepak, they wouldn't talk to us. They wouldn't come out and talk to us. And today they are, you know, they, they, they were the first people to take masonry training. And today, there are, uh, what do you call it? They're a registered vendor with Swades. They build toilets for us, that community. So, you know, these are the transformations that happen. So, those are really inspiring stories in a way like, you know, it's just a matter of uh, putting the confidence in these people. And once you give them that confidence, they can do wonders. Amazing, like things yes. I've already heard from a lot of NGOs that these women specifically, can do once they you know you show confidence in them and just, just push them to do something women and youth both yeah. are wonderful to work with yeah. True. and like you mentioned about the scale that you're operating at like 17,000 families that you impacted 2000 plus hamlets that you're working with so could you just also share and how do you mobilize the community volunteers to you know spread the work or even NGOs or partners that you're working with and also instill a sense of ownership in them to take charge of their own lives so as I said, Deepak, the, the key is that initially we used to go door to door, house to house. Now we don't do any of that. Form your VDC, your village development committee. Take ownership. Certain steps have to, it's like a test, a process. It takes time. It takes at least six months for us to actually, from the time we've started going to their village, they form the VDC. After six months, we actually start working. 
because it takes that much time to train them and build them. We do financial training. We do multiple trainings before we enter a village now. That slow initial process is the key to, to building scale. You see, you're going slow in the beginning and then you're just running. Then you're just running because they are the empowered people. They will decide whether they want the road. They will decide what they want. They know how to go and get it from the government thanks to our training, you know. So all they get it from us, you, you won't believe in the village development plans. So this money requirement is not as high as we thought. We thought they'd ask us for this and ask us for that. No, they ask first, they ask themselves, can we afford this? Can the government give it to us? Can we get a bank loan? Can you help us to get a bank loan? Very hard. By the way, we struggle with this. Getting bank loans for our community has been our biggest stumbling block single biggest stumbling block and it's very very regrettable and uh, last of all Swadesh so sometimes we guarantee their loans you know if the bank doesn't but we haven't told actually we haven't told them that they're guaranteeing but what to do we do that and I think it's worth it because we have not had problems with repayment and I guess that is something that you know once you start working with these communities is when you get to know the real nuances and the problems that are there on ground I mean you can throw around like 10 problems or 20 thoughts around it but unless you go there you know hand help hand hold them and see what they're actually struggling with because like you said the money might not have been the issue but the way to do or reach that particular goal or solve that problem was the issue that no one was actually mobilizing them to do that yes you're so or right you said it quiet. yes absolutely and now coming to the end of the conversation so lastly how has how do you even intend to you know uh, bring together the global practices, corporate thinking, accountability, and the highest standards of corporate governance, like we discussed in the beginning of it, to create a model that is sustainable and where people can take owners of their own work. Yes. So I think, um, well, I mean, when you say corporate and you say high standards, I think NGOs also have very high standards. So yes, what can we learn from corporates? Sure. Uh, you can also learn a lot of wrong things. Because I think we learned it that you can't push so much. You can't have these hard goals. You, it's a softer approach. It's a, it's a much more nuanced, sensitive approach. It's not that hard numbers, go get it, go, go, go make some sale. It's not that at all. You are transforming people's lives. Mm -hmm. So the approach has to be very different. But what you can bring is you can bring commitment, living up to what you said you would do before you commit Make sure you have the steps in place. I'm talking about our own team. And one thing I did want to say, by the way, to, in answer to the previous question, is that so this is a grassroots execution foundation. Our team is on the ground living with the community. They're in, embedded in the community. Okay, And I think that really is one of our biggest strengths. Um, we have a very strong advisory board, you know, with some amazing people who are constantly guiding us. Um, we have a very... You know, it's taken us years, Deepak, to get our m and &E right. And m and &E can never be perfect. We're always learning even there. But now I think, I can say quite proudly, we have a very good m and &E set up and led by a very, very good person. And I think Mangesh, our CEO, brings a tremendous amount of this because he is from the corporate. He brings the best of corporate head and also his own heart, as does everyone in the Swades Foundation. You need to have a head and a heart, you know. And honestly, when I recruit, I look for the heart. Look, I leave the head to everyone else. I look for the heart. I look for the passion. I look for that smile. I look for that commitment. That's what I look for when I do the fi final interview. That's what I look for. I don't, in fact, I've stopped asking all this, you know, work related. I have some, I trust them. And we have a very good recruitment process, which I think is worth mentioning here. It's a 360. All our heads of department grill that person. HR grills the person. Then Mangesh and I have our interview. Mangesh has his interview. I have my final interview. And then we decide. So it's a very long process. And I think we've improved vastly over time. NGOs have a lot of turnover usually. Our turnover is now minuscule. Single digit. So that's really something. And I think the other most important thing here, when you talk about high standards, is to have a learning mindset. Accept your failures as fast as possible. Encourage failures to flow upwards rapidly. If 
you really punish people for failures you will not get the right information and this is it's all our learnings okay it's it's so important i would put this on the top of my list you know have a learning mindset which means accept failure tweak it quickly get encourage people to report difficulties and problems yep. not just everything's fine everything's fine it's never ever ever fine yeah. it's never ever fine if they're saying it there's something wrong happening or nothing's happening that's why everything's fine so things are going to go wrong when you're when you are being adventurous when you're stepping out there and stepping into the unknown they are going to go wrong for sure see what is going wrong no matter how much experience you have with each new geography there's a nuance there is something to change what is that thing this is what we look for and this is really the sort of governance that we talk about yes and then we have excellent donors and their beautiful systems of reporting they're getting better and better and better as we go so and also also learn to listen and trust your community because you can't really have corporate governance if you're not listening to your community you'll get everything wrong you get everything wrong you have to go back and change so there it's it's a very nuanced question so thank you so much once again zarina to for the summing the whole conversation so beautifully where you touched on passion and you know having that intrinsic uh, value system in yourself embedded for to be doing good for the society as a whole and then also empowering them to do it for themselves yes i think that's the most crucial one of all and thank you once again for joining us it's been a pleasure to have you today thank you deepak i just want to say that this i think for me this has been the best job i've ever done indeed and i encourage a lot of people to switch from corporate <laughs> and come here and experience See, our salaries are also good now it's not that i mean they may not be on par but they're good and the work is extremely fulfilling and the joy that you get is phenomenal so yeah great so thank great. you very much for having me Thank, Thank you. you so much for joining. On me. behalf of the entire team of 10,000 plus community volunteers and 300 little under so two, about 270 of us. Thank you very much. Thank you so much.